Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about JetBrains Fleet, which just became available to everybody in public preview. So what exactly is a JetBrains Fleet? Well, the easiest way to kind of explain it is, well, it's a Visual Studio code killer, or at least that's what they're trying to do. It is a lightweight text editor that can, at a flick of a switch, become so much more. At least that's the idea behind it. If you've never heard of JetBrains before, they make just about every kind of IDE you can imagine, uh, from WebStorm to IntelliJ IDEA to CLion to AppCode, uh, and now Fleet. So they make a ton of tools here, including uh, Project Rider, which is very much focused at game development. Uh, but Fleet, this one again, is a lightweight editor, which can turn into something more. So the easiest way to show you that is to show you it in action. Let's head on over to a command prompt. I'm just going to open up a directory. This is a... Um, Coco's Creator Project that I just happen to have lying around. Uh, it is TypeScript based. And what I just did, boom, opened up the directory structure. Here we go. I'd opened it up before, so that's why we've got this file from within it. Um, again, you get your typical navigation, like what you would expect from a, a Visual Studio type approach. Uh, so here, various different scripts available. I believe this one actually came from here and then here. And you see all of your scripts are available right there. You can open up multiple tabs, as you can see at the top. Uh, you do have... Um multiple editing environments. We can go ahead here. Our windowing structure is available there. It is a nice, clean uh, structure. You've got your typical text editing. Uh, you do have multiple color themes available out of the box, such as we'll go with this purplish one, which maybe you can see a little bit better. There is a light theme and so on. There is going to be extensibility to this guy, but it does not exist as of yet. So right now, this is a straightforward, lightweight, fast text editor. So if I come on in here and I go this dot... It, it, there's nothing there. It's, it's nothing special going on behind the scenes. So now what I'm going to do is go on here and I'm going to turn on smart mode. And I'm going to go, okay, enable. What this is going to do is look at your project's directory. Try to figure out exactly what kind of project you're working with. It's opening it up. If it's a C Sharp project, it will download the appropriate tool chains. If it's a Gradle project or a Rust project, etc., it will do its best to hook everything up. Now, I do find that this is working so much better on Windows than it did on my Mac machine. I never got a single project actually work correctly on Mac. But again, this is a public preview. So I don't know if it's a configuration issue or whatever. Uh, but now it is in smart mode. So I'm going to come back down here again. And let's go ahead. This dot dot. Come on. There we go. Co-completion. So there was a bit of a lag there. It should be gone now. This dot, and then boom, you're getting your IntelliSense automatically figured out all of the stuff that's appropriate. Gives you uh, mouse over details. It should, if the language server is smart enough, it will bring in the documentation as well. Uh, so there are a variety of languages supported, but what you can basically get here is start with a lightweight, tele, like a lightweight straight out text editor with very simple things like syntax highlighting and so on. And then you can bring in the full language server support and it will download all of the appropriate tools once you are in smart mode. And then you should be able to do a run. You could create a traditional run configuration of up, available up here. If it was a Gradle project, you could do a Gradle run. It will automatically configure it as appropriately so you can run it from this directly so you're getting uh, language tools in here now as well uh, you do have some simple things you've got refactoring tools here for uh, renaming or extracting you've got code reformatting uh, you got some documentation tools. You got quick fix tools in here as well. There's nothing to fix because this project just works. But if there were some errors, you would get those showing up as well. Um, so it turns into sort of a lightweight IDE at this point. Now, obviously, it is not a full featured IDE because they obviously want to sell you their other tools. But this is ultimately going to be commercial as well. So don't think that they're going to lock you down on that regard. But there is going to always be a free version available. There are some settings. Uh, it's kind of minimalistic at this point in time. You may want to also be aware there is a, uh, a by default data sharing is turned on. So you can go into settings to shut that off if you wish. Again, you got a handful of themes, nothing too, sorry, uh, warning, uh, eyeballs may bleed. Uh, I thought gray was going to be much lighter than it was. So you do get a couple of themes out of the box. You need to get some fairly lightweight editing tools. You've got a uh, GitHub integration immediately. So you can check things in and out. Uh, version controlling history there. I've got a couple of other options in here as well. Search tools and so on. Um, I'll go over here to this. I don't know if this thing has a name, but you click this little guy here. You're going to notice there are a bunch of actions here. You got go to to jump between your codes. You can do searching within your code, jump within it right there. Uh, you have the actions, the various different things that are available. Think of this as the equivalent of the F1 bar. Um, 
So you can also press Alt Enter to assign a shortcut to something. So here are the various different things you can jump to. Uh, nowhere near as comprehensive as what you see with Visual Studio Code, uh, but it is the same idea again as like the F1 action bar in that one. Uh, you have the tools that are available. Again, somewhat minimalistic, but you do have full Docker support. Uh, and then you have text searching capability, search in project uh, with file masks, et cetera. So the kind of things that you would expect to be here are there. Uh, again, your menu is hidden into this guy over here. Uh, you do have GitHub integration. You have the ability to run your projects. Again, the, the selling point here is it starts off as a simple text editor and you can switch back and forth uh, using this smart mode here. Smart mode will automatically determine what kind of project it is. And then if it is supported, it will automatically download the appropriate language server, give you all of the stuff you would expect, such as, you know, uh, code completion, syntax highlighting, and more. Uh, but you can see here, even with it turned off, you're getting basic syntax highlighting. Uh, so it is a nice, you know, lightweight jump in here and make a little change to your code. But if you want to get in more involved or you're using this as your full fat editor, you do have that option of toggling smart mode on at any time and then getting the, the advanced functionality. So I think this is the ultimate selling point of Fleet. Now, again, my experience with this, it's worked flawlessly on Windows and like utter crap on uh, Mac OS. Just one of those things to be available, to be aware of with Fleet. All right, so here we are back at Fleet. If you want to learn about Fleet itself, uh, it is available at jetbrains.com forward slash fleet. Um, some of the details here, one of the downsides to it is you actually need to install their little toolbox application uh, right here. So if you want to check out Fleet, uh, you need to install this app right here to install it in. Hopefully they get rid of that at some point in the future because it's your entire idea behind it is to be a lightweight code editor, but you are requiring us to install a launcher to launch it. Uh, that is kind of annoying. But once it is there, it works flawlessly. Uh, I did have to add it to my system path though to get it to work uh, from command line here. Now I did not have to do that on Mac OS, so I'm not sure if that's going to change in time. Um, in terms of features and functionality, it is a lightweight editor that can automatically switch over to the smart mode. So that, again, is the biggest thing there. Um, it's got uh, distributed for flexible, so you can work on remote machines. You've got multiple people working with it. You've got Docker support in there. You have support for uh, JetBrains Spaces, a way of uh, hosting a, a development environment in the cloud. Um, and then cloud which is virtual machines literally running in the cloud. Uh, you got collaboration uh, built into it. So if you have multiple people editing, you can see that in their image right here. So you can see the various different people and what they're currently doing and working on as they're working on multiple different files. Uh, so that functionality is in there as well. In terms of uh, what languages are supported, uh, you've got Python, Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, PHP, TypeScript, Go, Kotlin, Rust, JSON, and HTML and more uh, are coming soon. We'll look at the feature matrix in just a sec to see what you get in smart mode and outside of smart mode with the various different uh, languages there. Um, again, it can run in spaces. That's their, sorry, so spaces is more of a collaborative thing, whereas uh, the other thing there, it cloud, so cloud is for virtual servers in the sky. Uh, space is for uh, group development stuff there. Uh, so it's got the basics out of the box, built-in terminal, Git integration, run and debug, go to support, available on Mac, Windows, and Linux, theming support, plugins are coming in the future, and port forwarding is available. If you're interested right now, it, well, forever actually, there is a free version available. Um, but there are going to be some features limited, uh, and you're going to be limited to three commit authors for private gits. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what the pricing breaks down to. But for now, uh, it's basically just free during the public evaluation anyways, and there will be a free version available, as you can see right here. Um, it will be possible to use for free with limited features for non-commercial development. So that part is uh, kind of unfortunate though. So it looks like for the commercial version, it may be uh, only paid. I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see how that ultimately turns out. If you're wondering, this guy's actually written with their home, own language, Kotlin. Um, that's part of also what makes it fast uh, in the idea here. Uh, this is not an open source project yet, but they are considering opening sourcing part of it. So on top of the things, let's look at the language matrix here. You get an idea of what is supported, where and when. So you see the various different uh, languages available down on the, the column over here. So for example, C++ um, is pretty much a no across the board. Whereas you get things like here, like say I want code completion, you're going to see some of these things are in place. Uh, some of these are partial. So for example, HTML has partial code completion available at this point, same with XML. Whereas let's say you are working with Rust, which I'm sure was here somewhere. Rust. All right. So here, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, work in progress. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I did not get Rust to work on Mac, but it worked flawlessly on Windows. So I don't know what's going on in the Mac world. Uh, but it worked perfectly in the Windows environment. As long as you have Cargo and Rust in the environment and all that, it will figure it out and deal with it for you. So you can see a variety of different languages. Some of them are much less supported than others. If you are looking as a C++ developer, uh, you got a lot of no's at this point in time. But C Sharp, sure. TypeScript, sure. Uh, Go, Markdown, uh, JSON, PHP, uh, so on and so forth. Then, of course, all the, the Java-esque languages are in here as well. Although, interestingly, reformat with editor config is a work in progress for Java. We thought Java would have been a full go because that's basically how they got their start. Um, and obviously, their own language is pretty well supported, though, interestingly enough, for refactoring, there is no extract method support yet. So you can see an idea of what is currently supported for the variety of different uh, languages out there. And you can also go to the bug tracker over here. So if you do run into a problem, uh, the bug list is available here on, ironically enough, their own tracking service, uTrack, which supports the various different problems. Uh, and I didn't actually dig into this. There might be something about Mac OS specific. Uh, I'm not sure. Definitely had, yeah, so I had, this is what I had going on with Mac OS too. All of the stuff uh, kind of broke uh, on that side. Now the editor worked just fine. It was like the code completion, the project build, that kind of stuff that all just threw me some kind of an error. Uh, but again, it, that's the idea. It's a public preview. It is fairly early on. Uh, if you are interested in checking it out, once again, it is available at jetbrains.com forward slash fleet. Uh, it is free at least for now. It is going to be free non-commercially going forward. It's gonna be interesting to see what the pricing and the license is in the end. Because again, you're competing with Visual Studio Code, which is just outright free. So uh, I, I think it's an interesting project. I like working with it. I think it is kind of what it set out to be, a lightweight editor that you can turn into something smarter. I personally am such a bad coder these days that if I do not get IntelliSense, I am uh, I'm doomed. Now, it's interesting whenever you turn, remember I turned smart mode back on a second ago. It's interesting to see, did I break it? Nope, there we go. Yeah, so that first time uh, you use IntelliSense obviously slows down. Now, another thing you can notice here, as I'm using IntelliSense here, we got real-time error here because obviously I've broken the code. You're going to see available over here. So you do have uh, errors, you do have quick fix select su suggestions and so on. Uh, so there is uh, smart mode is basically a lightweight, full-blown editor with integration into the language server. Uh, and, and, you know, you get all of the tools, or not all of them, but most of the tools you would expect from a full IDE. But they're not there until you actually need them, which is a nice approach. Uh, so this is the magic button that makes Fleet Fleet. So let me know what you think of Fleet. Are you going to check it out? Do you like JetBrain projects in general? Uh, what do you think of the look of this? I actually, I like it. I, I find it sharp. I like the um, the fact that they're kind of getting rid of some of the menu clutter. Um, this approach seems pretty sweet to me. I'd be interested to see once plugins are in place, what it is like. Uh, but yeah, I, I find it pretty nice. I also, one thing that they've always done, they have a di distraction free mode and they have a full screen mode. And those two, I, I have always really liked that uh, with IntelliJ products because this is just sort of a, a zenish approach to it. By the way, you can turn things off. So if you want to have literally just the one window open, you can do so. Of course, you can obviously turn them back on as well. Just open up whatever tool you wish there. So if we want to Docker over here and our files again over here or, or whatever else, you can do it that way. Uh, you can also have multiple tabs going on each side. And of course, you can turn these things off as well. So it's a pretty configurable environment. Uh, it's clean, it's sparse, it's straightforward. I like it, but I'd be interested to hear what you think of it. Let me know, comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.